college basketball today. The Lady Bears have come to Tennessee. And inside Thompson Bowling Arena, it's the SEC on ESPN. And we welcome you to Feast Week presented by Lowe's. By now, you're on to the leftovers, but this one is certainly a main course. Number seven, Lady Balls hosting number one Baylor in a terrific early season clash. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Knoxville. Happy holidays. I'm Dave O'Brien alongside Doris Burke. Rebecca Lobo will also be joining us in just a little bit. Doris, a great way to wrap up Feast Week because this one is the real thing. If you've got an appetite for basketball, we've got two teams that could be in a Final Four and maybe contend for a national championship. Brittany Griner, arguably the leading candidate early for Player of the Year. This would be a good one. Let's get right to the one-on-one -on -one and Brittany Griner, who changes everything with her great shot-blocking ability. Well, what she does is she changes your thinking on the offensive end. Because she can block shots to 15 feet, it changes where your opportunities to score the basketball come from. And that means a Tennessee team that has multiple options from the three-point line has got to live up to their percentage in the early season going. See Tennessee hitting about 42% from three. Now to the starting lineups and for the Baylor Lady Bears, they're unbeaten 5 and 0. Odyssey Sims is averaging 19 a game, Destiny Williams 13, and Brittany Grinder 24 as a team. They're scoring 92 points a game. And for the Tennessee Lady Balls under Pat Summit, Ariel Messingale is the highly touted freshman point guard. Spaney is shooting lights out. Baugh Johnson and Strickland are either seniors or graduates, so all sorts of experience there. Pat Summit, her 38th year as a head coach. Pat was the coach of the 1984 U.S. Olympic team that won the gold medal. One of her point guards was Kim Mulkey, who she's facing today in her 12th year at Baylor. She reached 300 wins faster than Pat Summit, Gina Oriema, and Tara Vanderveer, part of that Mount Rushmore she seems destined to join one day. Brittany Grinder to jump the opening tip with Glory Johnson. We're ready to get it going, and Tennessee wins it. And Baugh, who is going to be huge today, you would expect, almost gave it up. It came right back to her. Tennessee with their first crack at it. So interesting that Tennessee put three people back defensively and won the tip anyway. Off target, Shakina Strickland, the 6'2 senior. For Tennessee, two and one of the Lady Balls. They followed an impressive blowout win over Miami, number seven in the country, with an overtime road loss to unranked Virginia. You don't miss free throws and you don't turn it over 24 times and shoot 0 for 10 in the second half on the road and beat many teams. Madden looking for Grinder. Down low, trying to maneuver. And they're hidden blocked by Glory Johnson. Got her hand on it. Shot clock down to four now. Sims sees it. She's going to cast up a long one. That didn't touch anything but the backboard. It's a shot clock violation here for the Baylor Lady Bears. Now, believe it or not, in talking to associate head coach Holly Warlick, she said her biggest concern today was not Griner, that Griner would do her thing and get her numbers. Her bigger concern was Odyssey Sims and her ability to be defensively wreak havoc and make shots from the perimeter. So interesting from the Tennessee sideline that Griner's the given. You've got to deal with everybody else. The ball went right at her, and Griner picks up her first foul. A little more than a minute into the ball game. They send Vicky Baugh to the line. The graduate out of Sacramento, California, has already graduated. Another look at that foul moments ago. Well, I think one of the things that you can't do is you can't shy away. You go into a game understanding simply that there will be some rejections, and you've got to take rejection. You've got to just be able to continue to be aggressive. And I like how Tennessee went right to Vicki Ball because she's a key, and Rebecca Lobo sort of developed that story as this game goes on. Better her than me since she was the All-American center. You see how good Tennessee has been remarkably good inside Thompson Bowling Arena whistle here away from the basketball and a foul will go against Baugh of Tennessee. Tennessee ranked number seven Baylor number one for the first time in their history in the preseason poll over the top Grinder, a lot of iron no and the Lady Balls come away with a rebound. OK that is such a simple but nearly indefensible out of bounds play underneath. I mean, just lob it up to six foot eight. She's the only one who could catch it. 
Madden with the pick, and Baylor will have it. Outside of Griner, she's Baylor's best defender. Jordan Madden, a junior from Arkansas. Let's say this to you. She's got serious competition from Sims as a perimeter defender. If, you, if anybody watched the Notre Dame game, and honestly, Sims taking the ball in open floor situations against one of the better guards in the country, Skylar Diggins, you know that Sims can guard. Mm. And you know Skylar can play. Yes. So if you're per picking her clean, uh, so far, Baylor 5-0, and oh, wins over two top 25 opponents already. They beat UCLA by 33, and number two Notre Dame by 13. Here's Ryder in close, missed badly there. Almost as if she wasn't sure how close she was to the basket. Here's Spaney, who's shooting lights out from beyond the three-point line, 48% outside that arc. The three-point line has changed. It has now grown by foot in the women's game to 20 feet and nine inches this year. That one airmailed by Johnson, tipped out, but they'll keep it on this end. I gotta be honest with you, I don't think the change will, will impact pure shooters, those who are really comfortable making threes. I think it impacts the marginal three-point shooter on the women's game. Those that are, you know, they towed the line and tried to hope. Spenny blocked by Madden. Boy, she gets everywhere on the floor. Sideline to sideline. Five seconds on the shot clock here. Tennessee gets it into Johnson. The handoff, here's Strickland. Got it! A three-pointer. Tennessee out in front, 5 nothing over number one. Just a simple screen off an inbounds play, and nice job by Strickland, who so happy she no longer has to play the point guard position. All-American SEC Player of the Year last year. Here's Nene Hayden, trying to make a move into the lane, jumps in, scoop shot, harassed, taken away by Johnson. Baylor has not made a shot, obviously, they're 0 for 5 from the field. Strickland got held up, knocked away from her. Tennessee will have possession back to that inbounds moments ago. Well, just good execution. This is a timing play. A little handoff. Glory Johnson just hands off, sets the screen. Very simple. Tennessee chosen by the media in the preseason, traveling here to repeat as SEC champions. See, Kim has gone understated again with the choice of Blazer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Under, understated, I don't think it's ever been used in connection to Kim Monkey. Madden on a drive, got too far underneath, but also draws the foul. Harrison with the personal foul. Isabel Harrison, one of the outstanding freshmen for Tennessee. See, to me, those are the opportunities you've got to take away from Baylor. In a half-court set, their offense is going to be driven through Griner and a lot of shots by Sims. It's the other perimeter players, their opportunities will come in transition. Man, an 83% foul shooter. Baylor still to face UConn coming up on December 18th. That game also on ESPN. Boy, UConn has to look to a team that could be really good before it's all said and done. I know Gino wasn't real happy about his team just a few weeks ago. Here's Spaney on the attack with a left hand, though. Strickland blocked by Griner. Her first block. Now numbers of four on two. Going to settle for the long one, Sims. Boy, they had a four on two break and did not go to the basket. Five two, Tennessee. Spaney, nice move to her right, but traveling. A little too nice. Had the extra step. Now, speaking of tough games for the Baylor Lady Bears, I've already mentioned their difficult schedule to this point, although they've been flawless. Those two games with Texas A&M, the defending national champions. Now, Kim Mokey was saying yesterday she believes Texas A&M very quietly could be the second best team in the country. Seems very quick step, fouled here. She'll go to the line to shoot a pair. Odyssey Sims, the sophomore, who has actually shot more foul shots than Brittany Griner has this season. Spaney with the personal. I love Odyssey Sims. She's got 15 more steals than the next closest player on her team. She's fearless. She makes big shots. Physically strong, able to co take contact. And uh, there's just, listen, as a point guard, 
you know, she's starting to understand how to run a team, when to deliver the ball, where to deliver the ball. But as a competitor, I don't think you could ask for anybody better than Odyssey Sims. Preseason All-American and certainly playing like one, averaging 19 points and six assists a game. So Baylor has pulled within one. Opening minutes here from Knoxville, Tennessee. Doris Burke, Dave O'Brien, Rebecca Lobo alongside. Messingale, the freshman, gives it up to Johnson. She'll shoot it. That one missed high off the window. Up top, Williams. Destiny Williams trying to make a move. Gives up that dribble from 17. Tennessee tightening up their defensive effort here. And that one right out over the top of Griner and out of play. So they toss that one away. Our first time out, 5-4, Tennessee leading Baylor. <laughs> because I run my own business, my dating life tends to take a back seat. Do this. The world has changed. One in five relationships now begin on an online dating site. So what do you like to eat? Food is like the main thing I go for. <laughs> Match is easy and it's convenient and it works. Match.com. More dates, more relationships, and more marriages than any other site. Start for free today. Oh. Imagine me. Together. When life changes, so can your insurance needs. Use Traveler's free guide to better coverage to stay prepared. Is your auto and home insurance keeping up with you? Contact your local Traveler's agent or call 800-MY-COVERAGE. She's just really going at life hard to have fun and squeeze all the joy that she can out of it. I mean, she's got a definite sparkle in her eyes when things are going right. What about when they're not? Well, when they're not, then, then it's you work. A liar. That's when I work to get it back. <laughs> this holiday, show her she's loved with a diamond ring from Hellsburg Diamonds. And the matching pendant is free. I love you. You do? <laughs> the 2012 Rose Bowl game, Monday, January 2nd on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Lowe's, never stop improving. Back at Thompson Bowling Arena, Tennessee, with the slim lead in the early going here against Baylor. A lot of talk on this floor about All-Americans. Let's bring in our All-American, Rebecca Lobo. And Rebecca, talk to us about the value of a Vicky Baugh today, the 6'4 graduate for Tennessee. Well, as important as Brittany Griner is to Baylor, Vicky Baugh is equally important to the success of the Lady Vols. 6'4", great athlete who brings a lot of energy on the defensive end. And it's not only in the low block where we will be matching up with Griner, but it's in the full court press. She did not play in Tennessee's last game, the loss to Virginia, because of tightness in her left hamstring and IT band. But practiced all week, looked terrific in practice yesterday. An associate head coach, Holly Warlick, told us before the game, Vicki Baugh is huge for us. She brings that energy that the team needs. A very different Tennessee team without her on the floor. We'll get a chance to see that in the next few minutes. As important as all the skills that Rebecca just documented, it's her leadership as much as anything, Dave, to me. It's been a leadership void in Knoxville on the women's side for several years, and, and that's a voice this, this team will listen to. And have changed up point guards and going to freshman Messingale with Simmons. Big chunks of last year. Mad with a nice fake, lofts it up for two. Nice looking move and, and simple. You know, the shots that Madden and Condry and Hayden take, they've got to be all within the frame of the, the offense. It's got to be a wide open shot off easy action. That was Baylor's first made field goal. Simmons dribbled it off her foot, scooped up by Odyssey Sims. Johnson trying to chase her down, commits the foul and the basket. That was a cagey move by Odyssey Sims, a sophomore. At Pat Summit, none too happy with how that played out. Well, five foot eight, but five foot eight of stocky muscle and good speed. And in transition, see the crowd reacting to a non call on the other end. But she's aware of where the defense is, protects the basketball in the body. And the stare was not for her player, it was for the official. That was a ticky tack foul to be kind. And Baylor leads it nine to five. Didn't see a whole lot of contact there. 
So 15 minutes to go here in the first half, and number one Baylor has surged into the lead. Messingale misfiring badly. And Tennessee has hit a couple of shots, but taken some that they could have gotten anywhere in the shot clock. Williams swings for Madden. Griner demanding the ball down low. Over the top. See all the body she draws, but hits it anyway, the All-American. One of the things she does as well as anyone I've ever seen is the ball doesn't come down. On the catch, it's put in a place where only she can reach it, and she doesn't give the guards around her an opportunity to swipe at it. She's put up back-to-back 30-point -back double-digit rebounding games, back-to-back double-doubles. Ball trying to take her on, gave up the dribble. Shot clock at 9. Now it's Simmons to drive and scoop another block for Grinder. That one off target in close. Tennessee's Harrison misfiring, so 11 to 5. Baylor has all the momentum now. Sims trying to penetrate. Bank shot, no. She'll go to the line to shoot two. You can see the great enthusiasm that Sims brings there. Tuesday night, the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods comes your way. At 7.30, it's Maryland and Illinois. At 9.30, a battle two of the top teams in the nation. Jared Sullinger and Ohio State taking on Seth Curry and number six Duke. Duke fresh off their Maui Invitational title. We might as well call it the Duke Invitational. Yeah. They're undefeated. What is there, 15 and 0 over there? And 5 and 0 all the time, winning five mm. Mauis every time they've gone, they've won. I'll tell you what, their perimeter puts so much pressure on. You've got three guys all who want to score the basketball. Seth Curry, I think, has navigated the, the transition to the lead guard spot incredibly well. And there will be a new number one in men's college basketball in the next poll because North Carolina was stunned by UNLV. Messingale guarded by Sims. Trying to get free. Pull up pop and another grinder block. Just three of those. That time Strickland, she got a piece of that shot from Shakina Strickland. Left up top, Madden. Got a great look. Ball with the rebound. Now Tennessee to press it. Ball down the lane. A foul. It won't roll in, but she'll go to the line. How about that rake and take at <laughs> that size? Vicky Ball at six foot four. And that's not unusual for her, folks. You know, the crowd here enjoys when she can get in the open floor. Like Charles Barkley. They enjoyed just seeing her in the game. She was able to come back last year after missing. 21 months of game action with that left knee injury. Eventually got back into the starting lineup. This is her third start of the young season for Tennessee. And a coach in a backdrop today, uh, Coach Pat Summit, diagnosed this summer with early onset dementia, Alzheimer's type. It's considered mild, but a very distinct case. And she disclosed that diagnosis in August. Typically gutsy gesture by the winningest coach ever. To go public. Here's Griner with a catch low and a bank shot. That's unstoppable. It, it really is. Good pass by Odyssey Sims. And frankly, you know, we talked to, to Kim Mulkey. If you remember two years ago, uh, on this floor is Brittany Griner's opening game. The Pat Summit opened in a zone and everybody was stunned. So Griner's impact sort of growing every season. Strickland bumping there. Pretty good tussle with Nene Hayden. Finally the foul with 12.59 to go. Now today the unveiling of the Pat Summit Foundation Fund. Pat Summit Foundation believes no family should have to hear a diagnosis like Pat's early onset dementia, Alzheimer's type. And this is one of the two back Pat days here at Thompson Bowling Arena. They'll also do it for a men's game later on this winter. Well, all over the arena, you could see the We Back Pat t-shirts, and that's the start already. $150,000 going to two different Alzheimer's associations. That's the power of Pat Summit in Knoxville at work already. $75,000 to the UT Medical Center and $75,000 to Alzheimer Association here in Knoxville. Just extraordinary stuff. Tipped by Simmons with the quick hands and picks it off. Megan Simmons, a little 5'9 guard off to Messingale. So Simmons will take over the point here, at least on this possession. Up top, Harrison lets fly. Too strong, but they'll get another effort because of Strickland. She wants the ball back from three and drains it. Shakina Strickland buries it. She has eight. 
a season ago, Strickland drastically improved her three-point percentage. And now you can see the confidence with which she just lets it fly out of her hands. And so glad to see Megan Simmons make the extra pass. Well, Simmons everywhere tapped that pass by Condry. Got her fingers on that. Baylor leading it 15 to 12 for Kim Mulkey. So a little 2-3 zone by Tennessee. They'll show a 3-2 at some point likely. Simmons went for another pick. Here's Sims left open from the wing. Simmons with the rebound. She's a one-person fast break. All the way through. Griner missed the block. Followed up Strickland. No. And Baylor comes up with the loose ball. Now Griner may not have gotten a clean block on that. But she had so much to say about the shot being altered. Lost the handle, knocked away from Griner. And now they're going to huddle here on this call to see who got the best look at it, whether it's Tennessee or Baylor ball. And it will be Tennessee. Well, the Griner effect is in play. Whenever she steps on the floor, she is an impact player, the rejection specialist, making things difficult. So what do you do? Well, your percentage of three-point opportunities goes up. And to this point, Shakina Strickland knocking it down, keeping Tennessee in the ballgame. You put a lot of effort into creating the perfect evening. So we put a lot of effort into creating the perfect tortilla chip. Introducing Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Made with real ingredients cooked right in, a flavor you can see and taste in every bite. Because when we put in the very best, what you end up with only gets better. Experience Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Run for me. Conan the Barbarian. Get it today. Yeah, stand right there. I want to take your picture. She's right here? Yeah. That's good. Hang on, they're at it again. Ma. I said no pictures. She get a real job. I'm sorry, Mom. The I now think anyone with a camera is the paparazzi because I'm feeling richer effect. It happens when you get an Android smartphone from Straight Talk. With an unlimited everything plan for just $45 a month, you'll feel richer too. Only at Walmart. You already know us as the football guys here at ESPN. And since scores started on ESPN over a year ago, tens of thousands of people have won millions of dollars of discounts. It's easy to play and a lot of fun. Go to score it now and enter the code ESPN. We'll give you $10 worth of free bids. Tennessee trailing by three. They'll have the ball when we come back to live action here in a moment, but they probably caught a break as Brittany Griner went into the lane. Watch this. Well, it certainly looked like it was off is Isabel Harrison there. No question. Watch Kim Mulkey. <laughs> She'll let you know. And it's almost more frustrating when, when the call is going one way and then another official steps in and when she sees it right. on tape, it'll right. be even worse. Kim Mulkey, only Dean Smith and Bob Knight can also say they played on and coached a national champion. And her resume is building and building and building toward Springfield. Yeah, no question. And the National Hall of Fame. Oh, I don't, I don't think there's any question she'll be in Springfield someday. And <laughs> the question is, which way does she go in first? Player, <laughs> coach? Right. Spectacular player. So Tennessee with a basketball. Up top ball right at the foul line. Handing off for Simmons to drive it. Undaunted, but it rolls out. But it ran a great play. Perfectly executed. Everything but the shot going in. They're going to keep it on this end. You know, the best thing about Simmons right now is she's bringing great energy and an attack mindset. And, and the best thing for Tennessee right now is that she doesn't have to do that from the lead guard spot because with a true point, this team can operate a little bit differently, a little, uh, a little more pass happy than in the past. Baylor after the rebound, gave it up stepping on the line. That's a pretty shot by Shakina Strickland. Well, I'll tell you this. Shakina Strickland has the look of a senior who's coming off a loss and understands it's leadership time. 
And, uh, and a senior class that desperately wants to get to the Final Four in their last opportunity. She played 43 minutes in that loss, that overtime loss to Virginia. She missed a big free throw down the stretch. Baylor able to attack and Sims on the baseline and knock in her ninth point. So Baylor up by three. Brittany Griner's collegiate debut is against Tennessee. She played well in a loss. Simmons banks it in. Did she have that in mind? No. No, but she, she, she had the shot in mind. <laughs> she always has a shot in mind. You know, you're always so mindful of Griner. You can see that happening more and more. Hey, I got to get it up as high as possible. Griner follows her own miss to the other side. No. Hey, she's having a tough day around the rack. At least early. Messingill picks up the dribble. She was given the starting point job here at Tennessee before she ever graduated high school. That raised some eyebrows in Knoxville. That's going to be a traveling violation on Isabel Harrison. Let's go to Rebecca Lobo. Well, Doris has talked about the grinder effect. Defensively, she can come out of nowhere. 6'8", long, athletic, just block shots. And it's not usually on the own player that she's guarding, but the little guys in the help defense spot. When a big guy has room, has space, and they can get into that defender, they can block some shots on the guards. Uh, came into the game 27 blocks short of Courtney Paris's Big 12 record. And that one's going to roll in. Boy, that baseline has been exposed in the basket by Pope for two. So Tennessee trailing by three. So far, they've been the best three-point shooting team in the Southeastern Conference is Messingale. Another big rebound, Strickland, and they'll get a new shot clock as well. Nice job by Messingale to get that corner turn because Odyssey Sims was trying to shorten the floor and keep her on one side. Strickland fires away. Ball crashing that glass. Reiner knocked it away again. That's going to be off of Tennessee and out of bounds. Wednesday night, the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods coming your way. 7.30, it'll be number 20 Florida State against Raymond Green and Michigan State in the 9.30. Number 11, Wisconsin will battle Harrison Barnes and number one, North Carolina, at least number one right now. Well, Wisconsin, a tremendous defensive team, will have to slow down the transition game of North Carolina. And here's the 3-2 look, so they've shown you both zones already. Sims with a miss. Knocked away by Strickland, Sims right back up, no. Tennessee with an opportunity to tie it up on a three. You've got to love how Tennessee has competed on the glass. They're, they're not uh, shying away from contact, trying to do a good job with the offensive board capabilities of Baylor. Hard working underneath, Laura Johnson really going after it. Last season on the All-SEC first team, she has pulled Tennessee to it in one. Well, there were times in that Miami game where Tennessee looked as good as anybody. That'll roll in for Nene Hayden. Six-foot junior out of Dallas with the bucket to make it 22 to 18. Strickland. Now they swing up top here. Simmons. She had a good look. A lot of second efforts here by the Lady Balls. Johnson out top. Here's the three. Messingale can't bury that. They're certainly getting opportunities. Well, what they're doing is just tremendous. Pursuing the basketball, relentless, not shying away from contact, being as physical as Baylor. Quick step and a foul. Pope commits the personal, so Tennessee will be at the line. 7.07 to go in the half. Uh, everything we could ask for in the first half of basketball. Tennessee competing. Glory Johnson, one of the best rebounders in the country, doing work protecting the basketball. But Nene Hayden coming back and responding, just giving him a little bit of a cushion with 7.07 to go in the first. Hi, 
I wanted to get into golf from the time I was a young kid. I knew there was this great game out there that I loved to play. I really didn't know what the possibilities were. And the Golf Academy of America opened my eyes to all these different avenues that the industry had because golf is not only a sport, but it's also a very large industry. There's a wide range of opportunities in the golf business that the Academy can open your eyes to. We have a million different directions you can go in the sport, and the Golf Academy offers you an opportunity to go in any one of those directions. It's not like those guys to be late. Get it up, Boomer! Pick it up sooner! Come on! Hey, 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 oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. hey coach, what's, what's with the schooner? We thought we'd carpool today. Come on, you guys, get in. Plenty of room. Come on, Fowler. ESPN College Game Day built by the Home Depot. Saturdays at 9 a.m. on ESPNU continues at 10 a.m. on ESPN. How do I celebrate the holidays? Oh, I come to the mall, talk about Ford. Have you actually been in an F-150 before? Ranked highest in initial quality. Where can I get one of these? These are nice. EcoBoost engine in the F-150. The power of a V8 with the fuel efficiency of a V6. I really want to drive this thing, man. I'm impressed. I take it right up here, hit the food court. Now, get F-150 with up to 7,500 in total savings. Visit shopfordnow.com for more great offers. It's a year-end celebration. I would go to the Ford dealership, honestly. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Help, you know I need someone. Help, Help is here. H.H. Gregg, the fastest growing appliances and electronics retailer in America, has hundreds of TVs on display, like this 37-inch, only $299. The latest tablets and smartphones, better brands, lower prices, smarter associates. H.H. Gregg and hhgregg.com. We help. Again. The Lady Balls of Tennessee down four to number one Baylor on their home floor. Rebounding has been the reason Tennessee has stuck with it. They have 12 offensive rebounds, Doris, already. And 10 second chance points off of those. And uh, I just like the, the willingness to compete. And one of the things the staff told this group today was play with emotion and stay composed against the Baylor pressure. And for the most part, they've done those two things. Let's go to Rebecca, who's watching the huddle and listening. Well, guys, Kim Mulkey addressed primarily the rebounding in that last huddle. And what do the best coaches do but challenge their best players? And she looked at Brittany Griner and said, you must understand that you are getting manhandled. Start playing out there or come sit next to me. She sat down next to her. Eh, what, about 30 seconds? She's headed back in now, guys. She is two for six shooting in the early going. Well, just one rebound for Miss Griner. And I'm sure that challenge when she hits the floor will try to be met. Griner at the scores table, getting ready to check back into this game. Madden right on the sideline, tough pass, knocked away by Tennessee. With 14 on the shot clock, under seven minutes to go in the half. And a player of the year candidate returns. Averaging 24 points, 12 rebounds, and five blocks a game. But a little frustrated early here against the Lady Vols. Staying in that 3-2 zone. They have a body in front usually and one shading to her as well. Williams shot clock down to two. She gets doubled up deep into the corner and that's a shot clock violation. Boy, Tennessee just clamped down. You no longer have Lisey Brewer and a couple of the bigger body posts who from a pace standpoint could not play at a, at a typical fast pace for Tennessee. Now you can change all that. Strickland with a teardrop. Johnson trying to follow. She's tied up. Possession arrow is owned by Baylor here. So the Lady Bears will have the ball 625 to go in the half. If you're Tennessee for the first time in a while now, you can, you're, you're as athletic as you've been. You're long, you're fast, and you can do a lot of different things defensively. I'm anxious to watch this team develop on that end of the floor this season. Over the top, Griner, not a good feed. They turn it over for the fourth time, and most of those trying the entry to Brittany Griner. Griner just two for six. And that's a, that's a, a case in point to something I said earlier where Sims is, you know, sort of, you know, figuring out that point guard position, how to deliver it, when to deliver it, where to deliver it. Spaney with the bounce. She gets it back in the corner, and it's blocked by Madden. 
super quick. Another effort, though. Here's Strickland. Got it! She drains the three to tie it. And the big crowd in Knoxville really coming to life. They could be a big factor today. Uh, give Glory Johnson a, a huge assist in that case. Just great hustle to make that extra opportunity possible. Reiner right there and draws the foul as well. She'll go to the line for a three-point play. Brittany has always been a good foul shooter. Massengill with the foul. Now this is off a dribble drive, so the ball's put softly up on the rim, and that's a great opportunity for her to get involved because she's just working the weak side. She's so much bigger, there's not a body around her and makes it look easy. Once again, to your point, she does not bring the ball down and get herself in trouble. And a three-point play for Brittany Griner, the junior from Houston. So Baylor back out in front by three, 25-22. High post, here's Glory Johnson. And a whistle, and the foul will go against Tennessee. On the screen, it'll be on Glory Johnson, number two. Now let's take a look at this. She extend her arms there a little bit? I thought a little bit. Yeah. She can get herself in trouble with her elbows at times, off rebounds, and then also in those instances. So the coaches quickly get her out of the game with five minutes to go before the break. Sims with a quick step. And Tennessee's defense has really gotten tough. Reiner trying to muscle her way in. No whistle there. A battle for it. Strickland trying to save it. She goes out of play, and it's off of Baylor. Shakina Strickland, the senior. Really playing hard on both ends of the floor. Love the energy, love the passion, but one of the things that's going on here, and you take a look at the loose ball, Strickland giving up her body, making a play. But Rebecca, I've been incredibly impressed with Harrison, the rookie, and how physical she is being with Brit Brittany Griner on the defensive end, and that's in a zone situation. But they're still trying to meet her up the block. She's not able to get any position on the low block because they've got defenders surrounding her. They've got great help coming as well. Man zone, it doesn't matter. Defensively, if you can keep Griner from getting that great position, make it a lot tougher for her to score, as you've seen, as you've seen so far. See, Strickland there with 13 points. She's added five rebounds. The rest of the team has scored a total of nine. She's probably the happiest Tennessee player that Messengale is her point guard because Messengale is, is, wants to distribute the basketball, averaging seven assists a game. One, she doesn't have to play the point. Two, she's got somebody who wants to give it up at the position. So Strickland getting a touch every time down. Reiner there with another block, that time on ball. So give her four for the half. Madden on the charge, lays it in. And draws the foul, she'll go to the line. I thought it was a good call. And one of the things officials look for is what is your defensive body position relative to the offensive player? And see, I think it's a good call. I know the crowd reacting. I think it's a very good call. It, it's either a, a block or it's a no call. It's one or the other to me. He's on Strickland. A hustle rebound there by the freshman Isabel Harrison, whose dad Dennis played in the NFL for 10 years. Spaney's been pretty quiet, averaging 18 a game coming in. Harrison with a spin. Reiner stripped that one away. Here's Sims. Banks it in for two. You see what I mean? That's a, a similar case right there, and, and the baseline or lead official there just let it go. It was a no call. I thought it was the right call, a no call. Timeout. Tennessee takes one here. Lisa Mattingly, Hideaway, and Bonner, the other officials. Working this big clash between Baylor and Tennessee. One of the things I think you've got to do is I, I would want to make them execute in a half court because when you play Baylor, transition opportunities can really hurt you. Odyssey Sims, tremendous. They can make open threes or Griner can run the floor with anybody in the country. So Baylor back in front by seven. Earlier in 2009, Pat Summit devised a plan to stop Brittany Griner, then a freshman. But Griner was unstoppable. 
double and triple team. She dominated the game, 27 points, 10 blocks, 7 rebounds. That was an experienced Tennessee team. And uh, I think the, the, the difference in the second half, I remember Pat Summit telling me the most disturbing part of that game, Baylor as a young group of players just out-toughed her team. And you don't say that often about Tennessee, that a team out-toughs them. 3.57 to go before the break here in Knoxville. And every time Tennessee threatens to tie the ball game or come within a point or so, Baylor's able to go on a bit of a run, usually generated by a grinder block. She has four in the first half. Tough bank shot, that won't drop. Grinder went to the rebound, couldn't get it. Harrison had it deflected by Williams, and Grinder comes away with it. Open shooter is Williams. Can't drain that. She could not have been more open in the corner. And it'll be Tennessee ball. So we have a timeout on the court. 3.29 to go before halftime. Baylor with the lead. He'll be fine. More people are leaving BMW, Mercedes, and Lexus for Audi than ever before. Take advantage of exceptional values during the season of Audi event. Introducing Porter Cable's 12-volt Max system of lithium-ion cordless tools. Loaded with exclusive features. They're lightweight and compact, so you can move easily from task to task. The compact two-speed drill is a fraction of the size and weight of an 18-volt drill. The impact driver delivers 950 inch-pounds of max torque at 2400 BPMs. The innovative oscillating multi-tool is ideal for all types of projects. The clamp saw 0 to 3000 SPMs and unique adjustable clamping shoe allows for cutting up to 2 inch diameter material one-handed. The handle even pivots so you can work in tight spaces. And the 12-volt lithium battery is interchangeable with other Porter Cable 12-volt system products. Porter Cable, quality tools since 1906. Learn more at portercable.com or visit your nearby Lowe's today for great deals and offers on the 12-volt Max system. I've never caught anything in this old pond, but what I am catching is live sports. With WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app, I get ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN3, ESPNU, and more live on my computers, iPads, and iPhones. Oh, fish ain't biting. Time to get the dynamite. Watch ESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. The ESPN Networks, live anywhere. Cindy Brunson in studio coming up on the UPS halftime report the Olympic gold medalist Carol Lawson will be alongside. She'll explain how the Tennessee defense its zone has baffled the Bears just a bit. Also Carol will shine the light on some fresh faces you should keep an eye on this season. All that and more coming up on the halftime report. Dave Doris back to you. Cindy thank you very much. Baylor indeed shooting just 36 percent. Tennessee only 18 percent the first half. So you've got a Baylor team who under Kim Mulkey has been one of the best defensive teams in the country always at the top of the list in terms of their field goal percentage defense 179 straight opponents have not shot 50% against Baylor. It's been a real struggle for Tennessee outside of this young woman. Strickland with a teardrop. She has been their offense and continues to be now at 15 points. Shakina Strickland really keeping Tennessee right there down five on their home court. And now they come out of those two zones, go man to man, and Manning gets a nice strip defensively. Good job releasing contact. Senior Alicia Manning, team captain. She has seen her minutes go down this year, but still a valuable player off the bench. With all of her experience, Grinder goes up to the rebound, tips it away. It's Strickland again. Here's Manning. No. Grinder with the board. And a held ball. And now it's going to get a little bit hot between Vicky Baugh, who Rebecca Lobo talked about earlier being so instrumental, and Brittany Griner. See Odyssey Sims 
trying to calm down the superstar. Well, that's huge for Tennessee because this team follows Vicki Ball's lead and essentially by not letting go of this basketball and tying her up and watch what ensues. She's sitting there going, I'm not letting go. I don't care that the whistle's blown. I'm here to match you step for step. And everybody in the white jersey avail, you know, open to that message. So Brittany Griner just sort of backed away with her hands up. She had an issue punching a player a couple of years ago. That was an ugly issue. 2.37 to go in the half. Oh, back shot by Strickland. Everything is falling for the All-American. Single-handedly keeping Tennessee in the basketball game. Their defense is frustrated. Brittany Griner, and they're staying with the man-to-man -man off the steal. Three-point game nearing halftime. Griner in the paint turns. No, it has not been her day shooting it. She's three for nine. On a run ball, nice dish. Oh, and a terrific play by Madden on the other side with the block, and she has three. They do not give up on a play. How about this? Transition opportunity. Think it's going to be an easy one? Uh-uh. Baylor does not give up, and they're long, they're athletic, they're experienced defensively, and twice on the pipes by Jordan Madden. I say this to you. One of the things Tennessee's doing really well is basically saying, I'm going to play behind Brittany Griner, and I'm going to make her make shots over the top of me, and that's as good as you can do. Manning off the fake. Up top ball, straight on. Got it. That's a two-pointer. And it's a one-point game again. This Boy, is a good one here in Knoxville, Doris. I, I'll say this to you. This is a tougher Tennessee than we've seen in the last few years. Mm. It, there's a toughness about them. Reiner mishandled off her fingertips. Simmons trying to beat everybody to the other end. Manning battling for the rebound, but it comes away. Tennessee again had a chance to take the lead and couldn't do it. Difficult shot there by Sims. A little too much, perhaps, on a run out. Strickland got it. Tennessee by one. An eight nothing run for the Lady Balls. I, I gotta say this to you, I love the no call by Amy Bonner. She did not bail out an Odyssey Sims, an offensive player who was out of control on the last possession. Take some patience as an official not to blow that whistle. Ball lunged out, committed the foul. Her second, trying to get to Griner, came up with a high post. Number one against number seven. And even though neither side has shot it well, it's been very good, exciting basketball for stretches. Grinder will go to the line to shoot a one and one. And another one coming for the junior. He said this to you, Vicky Ball, when she's healthy, as Rebecca documented in the open is a force to be reckoned with. And maybe more importantly, though she tried to lead a season ago, it's hard to be a leader, Dave, when you're not playing a ton. And so they can listen to you, but the voice is different when you're impactful. And there's a different vibe about this Tennessee group. Out almost two years with that terrible knee injury. Baylor by one, Tennessee ball, Spain, he lets it fly, got it! Her three on the money. 37 seconds before the break. Timeout, Baylor. Tabor Spaney has been hitting 48% of her threes. Hits one in the final moments of the half to make it 33-31. Baylor will have the ball. And Tuesday night, it's the Big Ten ACC Challenge. Presented by Dick's Sporting Goods at 7.30. Join us from Maryland and Illinois, then at 9.30, Ohio State and Duke. Well, Shakina Strickland, one of those seniors who desperately wants to get a chance to compete for a national championship at a Final Four. She's been tremendous. Over her career, she has become now a dangerous three-point shooter. What was a liability early has become a go-to shot. And out in transition, so long, so athletic, good hands, able to track that one down. And by virtue of her will and skill, has kept Tennessee afloat until the other ones came around with her. Already 19 points and six rebounds.
coming off 16 and 14 in the loss to Virginia. That was a stunning defeat for Tennessee, although it was on the road at Virginia. Without Vicky Ball. Mm -hmm. Vicky Ball, who has certainly shown up today big time. Shot clock is down to five. Williams only now sees it, leaves it way short, and that'll be it. That'll be the end of the first half as Tennessee has one more crack at it before the buzzer. Simmons off target. It ends 33-31 Tennessee. So the Lady Balls come storming from behind. They trailed most of the half. And then on the Spaney three, they took the lead by two at the break over the number one team in the country. That was an 11 to 2 run by Tennessee, the eight time national champs. And boy, they certainly got this great big crowd behind them down the stretch. It really helped them. Let's go to Rebecca. Coach Shakina Strickland, 19 points. What adjustments need to be made on her and defensively in general? We better figure out quickly in that locker room who wants to guard her. Rebecca, they're playing just like you anticipated. They're playing out of their mind. They're playing hard for their coach. It's a great crowd here. They're playing the number one team in the country, and we need to respond to it. I thought we kept our composure until about the last three or four minutes. Uh, Griner's not having a good day on the defensive end, and we've got to get her involved on the offensive end. How do you get her more involved well, offensively? They're going to mix their defenses, and we've got to get her touches. We've got to penetrate from the perimeter and make sure we have ball reversal. And uh, we're all right. It's going to be a great game. Hey, Coach, thank you. you got to love Kim Mulkey. We're all right. We're all right, but it's 33-31. Tennessee with the lead at the break. Now we go to Cindy Brunson and Kara Lawson for the UPS Halftime Report. Thanks so much, Dave. And with that, we welcome you inside the halftime studios. This is the report presented by UPS. This is the gold medalist, Kara Lawson. I am Cindy Brunson. So glad to have you along the way. Kara, Tennessee with a 38-game home win streak, up two at the break. Brittany Griner, a story in this first half, but not for the usual reasons. Well, when you look at what Tennessee did defensively, going into that zone and really pushing Brittany Griner up to the free throw line for a lot of her catches and forcing her away from the basket, always having a player and a half guarding her. And I think that's the key. You've got to put her in areas where she's not as comfortable. We're going to look at the two baskets that she did make in the first half. Look at the players around her. They were difficult shots. And then what Tennessee did so well on the back end of those shots is push it back at them. So what Baylor has to do is, I think, look to find Brittany Griner in transition early in the offense before Tennessee gets their defense set and is able to dispose three defenders onto her. Brittany Griner with the nine points in the first half for Baylor. Shakina Strickland, 19 <sighs> points for Tennessee, really carrying a lot of the offensive load. But that is not the only reason the Lady Vols are in this game. Absolutely. 19 offensive points for Shakina Strickland, but 19 offensive boards for them as a team. And that's what insulates you against bad shooting nights. And outside of Shakina Strickland, Tennessee is not shooting the basketball very well. And Baylor not doing a great job of checking out on the defensive end. And what you see with, the, with Tennessee and able to get penetration, what that does is that confuses Baylor on their defensive assignments, their defensive box outs. So when Brittany Griner's co constantly helping, who's boxing her player out? Now, some of that is scheme because they're double team, but some of that is just laziness and uh, non-box outs for Baylor. We'll see if that changes in the second half. A big change we noticed in the first half on the bench for Tennessee. There were some comments in the first few games for the Volunteers that Pat Summit wasn't as involved on the sideline. That's not the case today. Well, I think it's a conscious effort by Coach Summit and her staff for her to take a reduced role, particularly during games. So you will see assistance in the huddle. Instead of one stool with Pat Summit on it, there's two stools, Mickey DeMoss, Pat Summit, or sometimes Holly Warlick and Pat Summit. So her assistance taking a more involved approach and running the team and helping with the timeouts. We also saw the glare. Yes, I know you that, were on the receiving is, end of the glare. That has not gone away. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Your assessment of Pat so far? I think she's been really active. I think she's been emotional and motivated. And I think even though her team is an experienced team, I think they still feed off her emotion and the emotion that the coaching staff brings. And we will see if that continues in the second half as well. Much more ahead on the halftime report. We are all over the fresh faces in NCAA basketball this year. Kara Lawson shines the light on that next. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. 
I joined Match because a friend of mine, my cousin, uncle, my sister, met her husband, met his wife, met her new fiance on Match.com. Match.com. More dates, more relationships, and more marriages than any other site. I figured, why not me? Start for free today. Well, I know I'm loved because he's extremely patient with me when he's uh, putting up with my antics. I'm a simple guy. Uh, there's not much I need. I want to smile. That's what I need. <laughs> And that's true. That's actually one of the, the coolest things Charlie always says. He just wants to make sure I'm happy. It's like, wow, even after 19 years. This holiday, show her she's loved with a beautiful Expressions for Hellsberg bracelet you can customize just for her. I love you. I love Seriously. you too. Mine was earned over the South Pacific in 1943. Vietnam, 1967. I got mine in Iraq, 2003. USAA Auto Insurance is often handed down from generation to generation because it offers a superior level of protection and because USAA's commitment to serve the military, veterans, and their families is without equal. Begin your legacy. Get an auto insurance quote. USAA, we know what it means to serve. I joined Match because a friend of mine, my cousin, uncle, my sister, met her husband, met his wife, met her new fiance on Match.com. Match.com. More dates, more relationships, and more marriages than any other site. I figured, why not me? Start for free to. Dreaming of a new home? Then let's get things moving. Get your dream home at a dream rate. How? With some of the lowest rates on the block at ORNL Federal Credit Union. Is that in the neighborhood of what you're looking for? Call, click, or visit any ORNL branch location. If you're tired of stabbing your fingertips to test your blood glucose, we have news that could change your life. The Embrace Meter from Diabetes Care Club is nearly painless. And the best news is that Diabetes Care Club would love to send you one of these meters. Call now to find out why. Nearly a quarter of a million patients have joined Diabetes Care Club. Membership is free. So is the call. Call 1-800-929-7452. Talk to Diabetes Care Club. You'll be glad you did. You're watching the UPS Halftime Report. Back here on the Halftime Report, presented by UPS, I'm Cindy Brunson, Kara Lawson. We always talk about the players that are going to shine, and they're the freshmen. You have broken down some tape, and all of a sudden, number two Connecticut doesn't have to worry about the old 23, Maya Moore, being gone, because there's a new 23 in the house. There's a new 23 in town, and she is terrific. Kalina Mosqueda Lewis has been tremendous so far. Early in her freshman campaign, can really shoot the basketball. She did go over last night in the blowout win against Buffalo, but just a composed player on the offensive end, and really who UConn already looks to as a freshman to be their go-to player. She was sensational in the first half against Stanford. How about the point guard for Tennessee? She has changed what they can do on the offensive end. Ariel Massingale, a tremendous true point guard, which Tennessee has lacked the last couple seasons, and she can really deploy the basketball to all of those weapons that Tennessee has on the wing. She's been a tremendous addition for Pat Summit's squad. And then Bria Smith out of Louisville. I mean, Louisville is a team. We, we saw their run last year. The point guard, uh, Shoni Schimmel, had a terrific run. This gives her a compliment, a player that can slice to the basket, that can drive, that's athletic there on the wings to go to go in. I think Louisville's a team that could make it to the Final Four in Denver down the road should they continue to improve, and Bria Smith would be a big part of that. Here's some more notable freshmen that you want to shine the light on. What separates these ladies? Well, you, you look at Elizabeth Williams at Duke. She gives Duke a go-to post presence. They almost pulled the upset yesterday over Notre Dame. Taylor Greenfield and Bria Goss. I think these are two integral fre freshmen for teams that have a chance to contend, that have a chance to go to the Final Four. Greenfield, her stats don't pop out at you, but I love her composure and her presence on the offensive end for Stanford. You've been in those shoes as a freshman trying to make a statement and get a starting role. What are the keys to doing that as somebody so young? I think the first key is confidence, and, and the one thing that those six young women all have is their confidence and what they can do, their skill level, how they compose themselves on the offensive end, and then being able to blend. We're talking about players that are a part of talented teams. Can you blend? Are you not just about scoring? Can you make other people better in terms of your defensive skills and passing the basketball? So we're seeing a multifaceted approach, I think, from these six freshmen, and that's what makes them special. Does anybody jump out of that list of those six that is ready to lead a team to Denver right now? 
I think Lewis is close. I think Kalina Mosqueda Lewis is close. I mean, she's complete. She's terrific. Uh, she, she comes from the six-man role for UConn, but it's very clear that she's the number one offensive option for this team. And remember, they still have some young pieces, a sophomore point guard in Bria Hartley, a sophomore post player in Stephanie Dolson, but I think Lewis is the best prepared. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Much more ahead. Wow, what a game so far. Tennessee with a two-point lead at the break. Shakina Strickland, 19 points, six rebounds. Cannot wait for half number two.